Thank you. The Big Apple's tourist numbers hit an all-time low when paranormal phenomenon started occurring everywhere in the city. A research team is hired by the university to make sense of it all. But sooner or later, the school's patience runs thin because the research team is burning through the money like a Puff Daddy video from the 90s. This university will no longer continue any funding of any kind for your group's activity. I don't care about the money. Scapelli's down here making threats. And I it's even hard for the viewers to take them serious until the eggs start hatching. After that, you could tell it's about to get serious. The female lead in the movie witnesses a gateway to another dimension. Instead of calling 911, she calls the contractors, aka the heroes of the movie. The heroes have a small independent company and their customer service is worse than Comcast's. They're always late because they take forever to return phone calls and when they do manage to call back, their vehicle is busted and barely makes it up the road. They meet up with the woman and it's love at first sight. Although they say you shouldn't mix business with pleasure, the contractor starts mixing them like a pack of Ovaltine. He asks her out on a date. Before they even get a chance to know each other, the lady is kidnapped and taken to another dimension. It's later discovered that the area she was taken is the corner penthouse of Spook Central and operates as an antenna for paranormal activity. This explains the dramatic change in New York scenery. The city is filthy and filled with gooey residue. And creatures that have been dead for years all of a sudden start roaming the earth again like an episode of The Walking Dead. Meanwhile, the gate between our world and the other dimension can only open when the Keymaster and Gatekeeper are fused together. The team tries to find out what's the worst that could happen if the Keymaster and Gatekeeper were to merge but can't find any solid answers because they ask questions to the side characters in the film and it's pointless since no one seems to have any answers or common sense. The heroes get arrested for minding their own business. It sucks when you and your homeboys get locked up at the same time because you're not able to call each other for the bail money. The city politician contacts the authorities to let them out. They meet up with the politician and it's like an episode of Jerry Springer. After the brawl, the heroes get a police escort and with the sirens, they have the ability to get through traffic in a hurry by running red lights. They drive all the way to this uptown high rise where the girl is held captive. The team puts on their one piece costumes with all their high tech gear and that's when we know it's about to get real. The heroes battle the villains with hundreds of spectators watching on. This boosts up the heroes' heads, and they try to electrocute the evil lady. It doesn't work though. A giant arrives, and you could tell this ain't real life because barely anybody runs after they see the giant monster. It looks like they're about to die, but the good guys fire their weapons at the same time, and ta-da or whatever, New York is back to normal. The people that were cursed during the invasion turn back to their original form and live happily ever after. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so. If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>